Hey guys, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial today, and this is going to be specifically about working out how to do a sort of sleep controller, or the way that we can sleep to rejuvenate our player in terms of the fatigue, stamina, and other attributes that we want to affect. Now in the previous video, we did a fatigue meter that when the fatigue drops to a certain value, it'll, it'll affect the overall stamina. So we need a way to when we go to sleep, we'll renew that f uh, fatigue, which will then renew the stamina, which will do all those sort of beneficial things, and it'll be dependent on the time that you actually sleep. So we're going to go by creating a, a simple UI, then I'm going to show you how to script it in to write a couple of scripts to disable the player so you can't move when they're using the UI and actually working out how to do the functionality for the actual controller itself. You want to make sure that you're into the 2D view up here in 2D and you want to be looking on your canvas and what we're going to create here is we're going to create a brand new sort of UI selection of elements so what I'm going to do on my canvas is just right click create empty and I'm going to just going to make sure that it's all centered to zero 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 if not we can right click at the top and just click reset then I'm just going to call this sleep UI and then from there inside the sleep UI which is still inside the canvas we'll right click and we'll go UI and we'll create a panel now the panel is going to be the thing in uh, which is just going to hold everything that we want to have in the UI and I'll just make it bigger so we can see it nicely and I'm going to select the color of the background and just turn the opacity up so we can maybe just see a little bit of the background and then we're going to add things to that so on this panel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it, UI and create text. So I'm going to create some new text and this is going to be the sort of title area. I'm going to centralize it and then put it to the middle and I'm just going to write in and I'm going to type in how long do you want to sleep and it just cut off because we just need to extend the bounding box here. I might just increase the text size a, a little bit so it looks like a heading that we've got here. So now I'll add this, I'll put it centralized roughly with the um, guides that it gives. So how long do I want to sleep? So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a slider between two values. We're going to have something that uh, is a value that updates to show you how many hours you're going to be sleeping. And we're going to create a little button. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the panel again, go UI and the text. And I'm going to put a text at this side. And I'm going to just call this for this one, just have it zero. So this is going to be you know sleeping for zero hours it's just this is just a visual indication I'll set it as center and middle again and I'll just put it next to this UI again then what I'll do is I will rename that to zero text just that's something that we're not really going to use and then I will duplicate that with control D and just put it at the other side and this is going to be our the longest we could probably sleep is let's say 24 hours so I'll rename this to 24 underscore text duplicate this 24 with control D and we'll just pull that down and we'll just pull that down under here I'll just leave it centered there again I will rename this to on this right right hand side in the inspector to hours and I will just scale the box out so we can see it nice and big I'll maybe put this on this side this is going to be the thing that we're going to update and then I will call this hours text on the left. And then I will make one last duplication of the hours text. I'll put it on, I'll put it on the right hand side of that we've just created and have this as let's say zero for now, because this is the actual specifically the UI element that we're going to adjust. So when we adjust this bar, that when we adjust this bar, that's the number that's going to update. So we'll just rename this to slider number and then I could grab these two elements and just move them maybe along to roughly towards the middle now what I might actually do is where this UI slider already is I'll right click the panel just create UI and choose the slider once again and we're gonna actually create a slider with a little um, handle on it and I'm gonna place this roughly where the other one was and just drag it up so we just scale it out a little bit and you can see it like so so I'll place it where that one was so what I'll do is I will delete the old the actual sli old sleep slider that we had underneath so now we have the one with the handle and that'll be a new slider and we'll just call that one sleep slider 
and you can see everything's set up now when we decide to move this we'll have some code which will update this number to show how many hours we're going to sleep now what we can do is we need a button to make sure that we accept how long we're going to sleep for instance so again we can right click that panel that we created choose UI and then choose button now we can just drag the button below and we can just leave it there and we could rename it something that you might want to rename it so I've just renamed my button sleep so if we press play now you'll see you can see the UI element there and you can see that when I unlock my mouse we can you know move this bar up do some stuff and things like that and press the button potentially but it doesn't do anything until we decide to tell it what it needs to do but there's the basis to the UI that we're going to decide how long we're going to sleep and then we're going to press a button to decide and then to actually sleep is we need to open up all of our scripts that we're previously using so we'll have a look at all of the scripts and it'll go along with what we need to create so if you open up the Raycast Manager, well, we don't actually realistically need to do anything with this script because we're going to use the script in the item properties, which we'd already done, and we're going to add a new element to this. So we decided that in the Raycast Manager, if we found a consumable that we could use, it'll find the object, find item properties, and then it will run the interaction method and uh, call the specific parameters that we need and then it decided if it's if it's food water or health it will do a different thing accordingly so now we need to create a script to actually control what our sleep is going to do so we'll right click in the project panel go create and choose c sharp and we'll call this sleep controller and then once that's written we'll open up in visual studio so i'll get rid of the two starting function and in our script we're going to start by looking at the different things that we're going to want to do to be able to make this UI appear, disable the player and then do the functionality that we need to. So first of all, we're going to write a few variables to understand what we need to do. So we're going to write square brackets, serialize field, then we're going to have a private game object as sleep UI. And what this means is that we're just going to create a variable which we're going to reference in the inspector with this one here and we're going to be able to turn the UI on and off when we want to. So I've only I've created this as an object a game object reference because um, remember we created an empty game object to put all the UI inside so I can just turn it on and off like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have another serialized field and we're going to have another private variable and we will once we've done collected the correct namespace so at the top right using unity engine.ui and that gives us access to the things that we're going to need so we now we can go back to our original variable that we created and say that private slider we set that to call that sleep slider and that's one of the things that we're going to you know get some information from then we're going to have another serialized field private variable called text and have this as the sleep number because again this is the sleep number is that number that we were next to the hours that which we're going to update when we change the actual slider value and then we're going to have two more so we need a serialized field again private float hourly regen so that's how quickly our or how much is going to regenerate every hour and then we're going to have something which will detect the disable manager but we'll create that once we've created the disable manager but I'll just note that down for now so with the disable manager in mind what we can do to make this apparent we can go back into unity and this is always good to do in any different sort of project is split everything up into a lot of different classes and scripts so you can control every different aspect especially if it's stuff that you use over and over like maybe a disable manager so we'll create a new c sharp script and what we'll do is we'll call this disable manager we'll open up in visual studio i'll get rid of the starting methods again and what we'll do for this is we'll use another namespace which is called using unity standard assets at the bottom dot characters dot first person with a semicolon because we're going to get access to the first person specific information that we're going to require to do to disable things that we want to first of all what we're going to do is write two square brackets serialized field we're going to write a private variable called first person controller and we needed the uh, the reference at the top to get access to that via shorthand and then we're just going to name this fps controller with a semicolon so we're going to reference this in the inspector because it's going to be the thing that we're going to disable now what i'm going to do is i'm going to write a public 
void, so a public method called disable player, two brackets, two curly brackets below. And then we're going to write FPS controller dot enabled equals false and cursor dot lock state equals cursor lock mode dot none with a semicolon and then cursor dot visible equals true. So what this means is that with this reference up here for the FPS controller, we're going to disable it so we won't be able to move and we won't be able to use the main camera. We're going to also make sure that the um, cursor is visible and it's not locked anymore so we'll be able to just use it freely but because we want to use the UI because if we disable the player we expect to be able to use the mouse features just so we can interact with the UI for the moment. Then as you would expect we're going to create another private, um, another public method so public call uh, void enable player with two brackets, two curly brackets below. And we're going to just do the exact opposite. So we're going to copy all those lines there and paste them in. And then we'll say that the FPS controller is equal to true because when we enable the player, we want to be able to run around and do stuff. Then instead of having cursor lock mode dot none, we'll have it as dot locked. And if you want, when we want the cursor then to be not visible anymore so hide it away. So this is a good way to split your script up so this script we can call these two functions whenever we need to disable or enable the player and you can write whatever extra functionality you need if you needed to turn certain scripts off especially if you access it all the time because there's no right point having to write all these lines in every different script if you've just got one script that controls it for you. So that's perfect for that now. We can go back into the actual sleep controller. I remember at the top we had a variable that we wanted to create. We want to now do square brackets serialized field and then we'll say private disable manager as disable manager with just a lowercase d because this is the thing that we're going to reference to call those actual methods that we require. Okay, so seeing as we've made this reference, um, we're going to write an actual start method just to find it automatically because this is something that you can do if you don't want to have to drag it into the inspector every time. So we'll write void start two brackets two curly brackets then we're going to go say that lowercase disable manager equals game object dot find game object with tag not game objects you must you'll be aware that you don't have the s on the end then we'll put in brackets in quotes then we'll say disable controller because this is the tag that we're going to be looking for and then we'll set dot get component angled brackets disable manager with a capital and then two brackets and a semicolon so what this essentially says is that in here that the inspector would be expecting us to add a component in there to find the disable manager that we require but instead of that we're just going to say that we're going to automatically fill the disable manager with the game object we're going to find the tag disable controller which we'll set up in a minute and then it will automatically find the component which is the disable manager and it will put it in there for us without us having to write any code which you could essentially do with this one as well but I'm just giving you some examples of how you could possibly do it. Okay, so now we need to actually be able to activate the UI and things like that. So we'll write a public void because we'll need to access this. Enable sleep UI, all capitals for this method start. Then we'll add two curly brackets and we'll write in the sleep UI, which was the original variable that we created at the top. We'll say dot set active is true. And that's active when we call this method, which we'll do from another script. And then we, what we'll say, because we'd already done this reference for the disable manager, we'll say lowercase disable manager dot uppercase disable player with two brackets and a semicolon, which then calls the method from the, the, the actual disable manager to disable the player. So we can't now move once we've activated the UI. So we also need to do a new, another thing to update that slider. So when we move the slider along, it's going to update that number for us. So we'll write public void update slider with two brackets and then two curly brackets below. And we'll say that sleep number, which was another one of the things that we created, which was the one of the text elements. 
dot text, which we need to access the text box in there. Then we'll say equals the sleep slider, which is another variable, dot value, dot two string, open brackets, in quotes, zero, and add a semicolon. And what this means is that we're gonna act, we're gonna actually put this into the sort of on-click functionality of the slider. So every time the slider moves, it will do sleep number dot text. So whatever the sleep number that we'd set, which was the UI element, we'll put in there the value of the sleep slider and we have to convert it to a string because the sleep slider dot text is a string um, component. So we need to convert the actual value to a string before we can put that in there. So make sure you save that out and now we want to add the functionality so that when we press the button in the actual sleep UI, we want to be able to do the stuff that we need to do. So I, you know, make stamina and stuff go back up to normal. So we'll do public void sleep BTN. And then we'll open up the brackets and write capitals player vitals and then lowercase player vitals. And then we'll add two curly brackets below. And what we're doing is we're passing a parameter here so that we can access the player vitals script that we, you know, we want to be able to access. Similarly, how we did in the item properties, it does the same thing. We put the parameter into the method so we can access the player vitals in the other script to change things without has us having to do sort of long handed um, calls back to it. So we'll go back to the sleep controller in here. What we'll do is we'll say that player vitals with a lowercase dot fatigue slider dot value equals sleep slider dot value times by the hourly regen. And we'll save that. We'll say player vitals with a lowercase dot fat max stamina equals player vitals dot fatigue slider dot value with a semicolon. Once we've done that, we need to go back into the player vitals. We need to open up the um, stamina variables and fatigue um, variables. And we're gonna look at creating fat max stamina to a float value because the slider is a float value. So we can explain, we can actually convert a float to an integer without them being the same thing without doing some code. But if we change the ma fat max stamina to a float, it'll be absolutely fine. Then under here, we can also do player vitals dot stamina slider dot value is equal to player vitals dot norm max stamina with a semicolon. And then we'll also say that sleep slider dot value is equal to one. Then we'll say disable manager dot enable player with two brackets and a semicolon. Then we'll finally say sleep UI dot set active in brackets false with a semicolon. So everything here. So when we press the sleep button, we're going to do the fatigue slider is going to equal the sleep slider dot value. So depending on what the value is, it could be all the way up to 24 times by the hourly regen. So if we set the hourly regen to one, let's say, we'll just get one stamina back for times by the amount of actual hours that you've slept. And then what we'll do is we'll set the uh, the fatigue max stamina equal to the actual fatigue slider that we've just set. So we make sure that we get the maximum amount of stamina back depending on how long we've slept. Then what we do is set the stamina slider to the normal max stamina because say we sleep for an hour, we should have full stamina back. So that's absolutely fine. Then we'll set the sleep slider, which is the actual that little slidey bar that we created today, just back to one to a normal value. Then we'll disable, the, we'll enable the player with the disable manager so we can then move around again. And then we will close the UI because it's all done almost as one go. So there's pretty much one thing we need to do to connect this all together. We need to open up item properties. And like I said in here, we need to reference something to actually make sure, well, what, what, what are we going to click on? So we'll write another um, else if statement in here and we'll say the else if that we're going to look at this time is it's going to be if it is a sleeping bag, let's say, and then we're going to have two curly brackets below. Now it'll be squiggling because we need to add another square bracket serialized field private 
bull as sleeping bag for instance and then what I might do is we need to reference the actual sleep controller so we can do something with it so we'll have two square brackets again and serialize field and then we'll say private sleep controller as lowercase sleep controller with a semicolon then what we'll do like we did in the actual sleep manager we'll write void start two brackets and two curly brackets below and say that sleep controller with a lowercase equals game object with a capital dot find game object with a tag without the s then in brackets in quotes we'll do sleep controller then we'll say dot get component open up the triangle brackets in there we'll say we want to get access to the sleep controller with two brackets and a semicolon so that's all well and good back into our sleeping bag down here we need to make sure that that's actually a lowercase s to match up that's now working then what we'll say is that sleep controller dot enable sleep ui two brackets and a semicolon which was the public method here which just activates the ui that we want and then disables the player okay so now we need to go back into unity in our managers what we can do is we can right click create a um, new empty game object make sure it's at zero 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 what we'll do is we'll call this sleep controller what i'll do is i'll add my sleep controller script that's all well and good now we can right click managers create empty and then what i'll do is i'll call this disable controller add my disable manager script there and it's asking for the FPS controller. So what I'll do is I'll add that straight in because that's nice and easy. In my sleep controller script, it's looking for the disable controller. So it's right there. The hourly regen can be one. The sleep number is that UI, which we'd already um, added, which was the called the slider number. And um, we'll add the sleep slider, which was that one there. It's called sleep slider. Perfect. And then we'll add the main sleep UI to the top here. So what we can do to make it more consistent is if we go to the disable manager, we can add a new tag and call it, well, add a new one. We'll call it disable controller, like in the script, press save. We'll add another one called the sleep controller and save that. Now on our disable one, we can add disable controller. On our sleep controller, we can add the sleep controller just in case we have anything that we require in the future. So what we could do before we start is that we can close up the UI, sleep UI and just untick it. So now it's not available to use at the very start. We could go back to the scene, go to 3D view again, find the FPS controller. And what we can do is we can add potentially a sleeping bag here. So we'll just add a 3D object. So we'll add a new cube just here and set that as tag. It's going to be consumable and I'll put that into my consumables and I will just enable that entire fold so we can see them all there. We need to make sure that, that cube has the interact layer on it and what we'll do is we'll add the item properties to that object. Then what we can do is going to say that oh look this is a sleeping bag and we've got a consumable here and we can call it a name of sleeping bag just so we can update the UI accordingly. So once we've done that and made sure it's ticked as a sleeping bag and we've It'll find the sleeping con sleep controller automatically. So when we press play, we expect that to autofill, which it does. You can see that there, these are all working and you can see that I can run around and you can see that that's now a sleeping bag. We can left click on this and you can see that now my UI appears. I can't actually move when I press my um, buttons anymore. I can't look around my currently my cursor is unlocked and we can move this slider, but it doesn't do anything up yet because we've not connected it but it's all well and good because we've got that all pretty much working and there's no errors as of yet. So what we can do is if we go back into the sleep UI, we wanted to click on the sleep slider and we wanted to update the actual thing that we were looking to update. So in the on value event, we can add a plus. It's gonna look for an object that we want. So we wanted to get something from the actual managers, the actual sleep controller. So we can add the sleep controller in there and we'll go down we'll want to select the sleep controller script and we want to select the update slider method. So if we go back into here again and we look at the sleep controller, 
in the update slider, it's going to, every time we move that slider, it's just going to update that sleep number for us based on what the slider value actually is. And then the button that we created, which was going to be our just, you know, pretty much sleep at the time, is that we're going to do the same thing. So we'll add an on click event and we'll want to drag our sleep controller in here. And then we can go to the no, no function, select the sleep controller. And then what we're going to do is we want to do the sleep BTN. And then it will automatically be looking for the player vital script. So what we can do there is we can add the, so we can add the player vitals there by doing, putting the FPS controller into that slot. So it'll find, so that's all found for us. Then we can press play again. We can have a look at our sleeping bag. We can left click on it. You can see that it all updates there. It pops up, can't move. Now, if I move my slider, you can see that now when we move that slider from zero to 24, it only updates by one. So what we can do is if we go back onto our sleep slider, we can change something so the minimum value can be one and the maximum value can be 24. And then we'll keep it as, let's say, whole numbers. We'll press play. We'll go over here, back to our sleeping bag again, left click. And then what we can do is we can just do it add it like so, it will start at pretty much one. You could update that number to be one if you want, and then we can, you know, it'll go all the way to 24. So you can see that the stamina and fatigue is all the way down at the bottom because it's moving pretty fast. So we can decide that we might want to sleep for, let's say, 10 hours. And then we can click the sleep button and we expect that the two bars to update. And then this UI to disappear, so we'll click sleep. Now what we could do is that because the values are moving quite quick, we can just do the hourly regen as something like 10. And then we can press play because you can slow these down if you were doing, you know, a normal game. Then we can update that and we can just maybe we're going to sleep for 20 hours, let's say. And then we can press sleep. And you can see that the fatigue went all the way back up. And so did the stamina. And what we can also do is say that player vitals dot fat stage one is equal to true player vitals dot fat stage two is equal to true and player vitals dot fat stage three equals true when we come to do it and then if we test that out and we go back onto the actual object itself and we go to sleep and we can choose to sleep for say 10 hours which you can choose to sleep this fatigue will go all the way back up stamina will go to full and then it will drop down as it would do normally. There may be some problems that you'll need to iron out depending on, you know, when the stamina will fall, if your fatigue's already dropped, you know, what portion of time that you need the stamina to come back, if the stamina only comes back halfway. But for the sake of these videos that I could spend any number of time, you know, going through all the little miniature issues that you might possibly get, but it's up to you to sort of optimize and work out um, little things and how you can improve the code as you go along and what issues you might see in the future. So this is just the basis to creating the UI, creating the sleeping controller and creating the things and updating the sliders as you need to. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.